open up to the next clean page in our math notebooks for today's notes. So here is what we're doing. 4.9 multiplied decimals and today's date, which is 11-12-20. So you guessed it. So up to this point, we have rounded decimals. We have figured out how to where to put the decimal in an answer. And we've been given decimals that are multiplied together and figured out if the answer is correct. Now we are actually going to multiply decimals. Yeah, you should have it. All right. Hmm? Okay, so. Do you guys remember how when we were multiplying a decimal and a whole number, it was the exact same thing except at the end, or it was the exact same thing as multiplying whole numbers, except at the end we just added the decimal point. Do you remember us doing that? The same goes for multiplying two decimal numbers, okay? So, so how to multiply decimals? Nope, yesterday we just placed the decimal in answers. How to multiply decimals? Yes, that's up to you. When I write like subheadings, I like to capitalize them, but that's up to you. It's your notes. How to multiply decimals. So, our first step, we're going to stack and there's only two steps. Stack and multiply the numbers like you would whole numbers. Ignore the decimal. Which, we wrote this when we were multiplying a whole number in a decimal, right? Mm -hmm. So same first step. The same first step. I'm going to put my hand in here because it makes it brighter on the smart board. <laughs> so number one, we're going to stack and multiply the numbers like you would whole numbers. Ignore the decimal. So fifth grade, why are we talking first of all? All right, when we are stacking our decimals to multiply them, do the decimals need to line up? Yes. No, they do not. We're stacking them just like whole numbers, Addie, right? And so when we stack whole numbers, there's nothing that absolutely needs to line up, except, you know, like the right, and then they just kind of go off to the left. So when you're stacking decimals, you do not need to line up those decimal numbers, because if you're multiplying like 2.1 times... 1.75. The decimals aren't necessarily going to line up. You just stack them like they are whole numbers and you ignore the decimal to begin with. Put a thumbs up on your desk when you have this written down. Awesome. Thank you, Addie and Layla. Thank you, Michael and Allison. Thank you, Elena and Emmy and Chanel and Grayson. We're going to have a practice problem, yes. So, I should practice Not yet. Awesome. Thank you, Senna, and Mackenzie, and Will. And, not yet. And Iosius. Oh, are the best. Thank you, Frankie. Um, how about after we get the practice problem down, okay? Thank you, Jack. What? It says ignore the decimal. Uh, no, just one. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Elena. All right. Thank you, Jack. So, we do have a practice problem here. And notice, are my decimals lined up? No. We, I stack them like they are whole numbers. So, 12.5 or 12 and 5 tenths times 0 and 9 hundredths. Now, our directions say to stack and multiply the numbers like you would whole numbers. Ignore the decimals. So, once you have this written down, 
I'd like you to multiply these two together. Ignore the decimals. Don't even worry about them yet. Don't worry about them yet. So pretend the decimals aren't there and just multiply them like they're whole numbers. So get started on this. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up when you have this one solved. Ready to rock. How many of you wanted really badly to add the decimal point in your answer already? Yeah? Okay. Well, let's see. Let's first solve this together. Um, let's see. Does dark pink show up there pretty well? This color? No. You can't tell. Okay. We're going to see. All right. Nine times five is? Forty-five. So I'm going to carry the four. Bring down the five. Is that showing up pretty well? Yes. Okay. Nine times two is? Plus four is? Uh, yep, close. Twenty-two. Eighteen plus four is twenty-two. Carry the two, bring down the two. Nine times one is? Nine. Plus two is? Eleven. Awesome. Now I'm going to cross each of these out. Now, before I move on to the first zero, what do I need to add here? A placeholder zero. Then, we take zero times five is? Zero times two is? Zero. And zero times one is? I'm waiting for voices to be off. Jack P, pull up your mask, please. All right, then before I move on to this, this zero over here, what do I need to add? Zero. Two placeholder zeros. Two placeholder zeros because I'm going over two spots to multiply with this zero. So I need two placeholder zeros. Then I do zero times five is? Zero. 
Zero times two is? Zero. Zero times one is? Zero. Then I add them, just like normal. I know, right? Five, two, one, one, zero. How many of you got this? Zero, one, one, two, five as your answer. Awesome. Then we have our second and final step, which is, okay, I'm going to, it looks like a lot of words. I will paraphrase, and if you want to write the paraphrase down, you can. Listen, please. So, listen. You can write this down instead. Count the number of decimals, or sorry, count the number of digits. Count the number of digits count the number of digits to the right of the decimal period you should have the same count the number of digits to the right of the decimal and then you should have the same number of digits so I said you should have the same number of digits to the right in your answer I rewrote the problem, but it's exactly what we did. We have three digits, right? With the two numbers we multiplied, there are three digits, the five, the zero, and the nine, which means in our answer with the digits zero, one, one, two, five, we would go in three places. One, two, three, and our decimal would go in between the one. Just like what we were doing.
and the decadecimal is not there. Then we track it separately, counting and our two factors for multiplying. Then running step digits to the right of the decimal and figuring out where the decimal goes in an answer. Now we're just taking those two scales and putting them together. Just like multiplying whole numbers, except at the end, you are looking to see where that decimal goes in your answer in this product. for you. So you just make sure the right lines up and then you just go out from there, just like with whole numbers. So go ahead, get these three practice problems written down and then you can immediately start solving them. Yes.
Messenger. We're going to head up in a minute or two here. Okay. Yeah, why don't you go ahead. Has everyone been getting the digits I got? Yeah. Okay. So then I will go through then and see where to put my decimals. So if I look in the first one, we have one, two, three numbers to the right of the decimal. So I'm going one, two, three numbers in, three and 465 thousandths. For my second one, we have one, two numbers to the right of the decimal so i'm going one two spots in for 28 and six tenths or 28 and 60 hundredths and for my third one we just have one spot to the right so i'm going one spot in for 132 and three tenths ready to rock how do we feel with placing the decimal point all right all right Awesome. Go ahead and line up for mass. We're doing the open row. Also, 